Listen, up then to get the free matcha in our store while you checking the glasses. Stuff like right. that. It's unique. It stands out. It's a free, free, free marketing. You see? How cool are they? And I didn't even need a freaking first pair of glasses. And now I have four <laughs> <laughs> pairs of glasses because of their amazing omni-channel marketing experience. We didn't know was it real person or AI because we were asking the guy a question. He stopped for a little, never respond and continue with his script. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Email Einstein, the podcast by Flowium. We are your host, Vera Sadlik. And Andrei Boychuk. And welcome back to... What is going to be the last podcast of the year, right, Andre? This is going to be our yes, final so wrap up of the year. Yeah, and we're planning to uh, bring our like what magic ball or whatever it's called and predict the future. Yes, yes, predicting the future. That's what we will be doing today because today we will be talking about upcoming e-commerce trends, or at least that's these are the trends that we think will be big this year. And as we head into a new year, there is some turbulence like on the economic horizon, inflation. There are some like major changes in email marketing and in e-commerce in. In general. But the good news is, despite this hurdles, e-commerce is still is here to grow and to thrive in this ever-changing environment. We actually prepared our four big predictions that you can implement this year and four big, basically, like opportunities to help you to go through the storm that 2024 might have and uh, be very successful in the world of e-commerce. Vera, before we start, before we yes. start, I have a few questions for you. So how is London? Like, I, I'm <laughs> extremely curious to find out what's going on there. How is life? The, the happiest place on earth, you guys. It's not a Disneyland. It's London. I mean, probably a Hold lot on. of people... Is it would... Amsterdam? It's like uh, as happy as <laughs> Amsterdam? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I might be biased, but I'm like in love. We're still in that honeymoon phase with London. But to be honest, this is like not the best time of the year to be here. This is like definitely the gloomiest time of the year. And I'm still still enjoying every freaking second of it. We moved quite a lot ever since we got to London because we haven't had our permanent place. Finger crossed we're going to get our keys very soon. But as you can see right now, I'm in this Airbnb number two right now. Um, and I'm like literally recording in the kitchen. So we're going to have a cozy uh, kitchen talk today with you guys. What's new and exciting with you, Andre? So in the future, we'll show the uh, kids how you travel as a spot guest uh, yes. in your uh, Airbnb. Totally. Everything's good. Life is same good. Same old, same old. Life is good. Yeah. Same old, same old. Not, not, nothing new and exciting. I mean, I'm preparing for winter hike, but nothing, <gasps> nothing major. It uh, would be one day hike up and down. Not, not their high mountain. It's like one kilometer, maybe 1,500 kilo uh, meters above the ground. In but, U.S.? Yeah, in New York, it was oh, okay. it was those snow, snow. I don't know shoes and whatever. <sighs> it's a team of volunteers will go there. Just that's just exciting. Yeah, 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 you can lead them. Yeah, I mean, you have so much experience now, right? <laughs> it's not your first <laughs> yeah. rodeo, Andre. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. listen, it's Kilo December twenty sixth. It's yeah. December 26th when we airing this. Uh, today is December actually fifth. So, but did you prepare your resolutions like any New plans Year for twenty twenty four? Yeah, I mean, I I, mean, I wrote my goals already for the year 2024, and I'm right now I'm I'm big into Notion, you know, this like planner platform or whatever. Yeah. I'm like mm -hmm. in love with Notion. I saved myself this like really cool template. I actually I bought it. Okay, I'm guilty. I, I bought it from one of the influencers. I totally didn't need it to do that, but it's so cool. So yeah, I have prepared all of the goals. I'm not gonna spoil them. I don't want to jinx them for now. But some Listen, of them you are have really to reveal exciting. the first one. You have to reveal the first. One okay, if my landlord, <laughs> if my landlord is listening to this podcast right now, we plan to. Uh, I I dream of purchasing an apartment in London, but uh, wow. yeah, I mean it's a it's a big obviously it's a big goal, but uh, maybe it's gonna take us longer than a year. It's a big dream, but I mean, who said nice, we can nice, do this, nice, right? Nice. I yeah. thought you would say that you don't want to curse in Ukrainian anymore. That you, this is how we started the <laughs> oh, podcast okay. before, <laughs> behind the scenes. <laughs> because so right. just backstory, we start with some Ukrainian curses. Just I don't know why, and we said that we start to curse when the worst uh, war started. And Vera said one of her resolutions to stop cursing in 2024. Actually, I like it. That's actually a good one. Yeah. And I've never cursed before the war. And now it's just like the way I talk. I talk like a pirate in Ukrainian, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad, you guys. Yeah. No more 
cursing. In, with English, it's easier because you guys have only like one word. Ukrainian <laughs> curse Come is on. like so advanced. You just, lost, no, but, you just lost like half of our audience. <laughs> but I mean, that's that's just like tells you a lot about the mentality. Like you guys are efficient. You just need one word. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, so no more cursing. Well, anyways, going back to the trends, right? Let's start with the with the one that I'm personally very, very excited about. You guys, we predict, again, uh, looking at our magic prediction ball, um, that social commerce is going to be a big one in the year 2024. What is a social commerce? Okay. Social commerce, it's basically when you marry together a social platform, e-commerce platform, add uh, like streaming services, add credit cards and everything together, mix it together. And voila, you have like a new powerful platform where people can uh, search and shop. I'm going to explain to you in a minute. I know it might sound a bit confusing to, especially to all of our listeners who are listening to us, like from US or from Canada, from Europe, but you guys in Asia, especially in China, it's been huge for the last, I don't know, like five, 10 years. And China has been actually at the forefront of so social e-commerce uh, with companies like Alibaba, WeChat, Taobao, Taobao. My friend who actually moved from China to Vancouver, she talked a lot about it uh, because she said that like shopping here, comparing to like shopping in China is like a I don't know, it's like a kindergarten comparing to like PhD or whatever. Actually, here's a fun number. In US recently, they've done this little study and 42% of respondents, they said that they would trust social media platforms with their credit card information, which basically tells us that people are ready to shop on social media. And I mean, we do have some functionality when you can go to like a Instagram store and like purchase from there, but it still like brings you to the checkout page of your actual store. But social e-commerce in say China, China, it entails promoting and selling products and services through various social media channels, basically. Actually, and, uh, uh, yeah. Sorry. Actually, yeah, I ahead. have experience. Yeah, uh, I mean, you uh, listen. You're like a teacher. You're like uh, like uh, like teaching, teaching, and you don't give me, uh, don't allow me to ask a question. So uh, <laughs> let's let's uh, inhale <laughs> and make some stops, please. No, I, I just want to share. I just want to share some some experience uh, that I didn't even know. It's called social. What was called social e-commerce. Social or? commerce, yeah. Social commerce. So I was buying uh, for the company, the organization I vol volunteered last year. I was buying like things like Velcro. We were creating the uniform, and we need to buy that. And I mm -hmm. found it on Alibaba. And I was like, hey, can you send me like asking them a bunch of questions? And they like, just join this video chat. <laughs> and I'm like, it's a just, sorry, just join this video. And I'm like, I don't want like on Zoom, go on Zoom. And then, <laughs> so I'm like, like what arguing with them. <laughs> yeah, just sell it to me. And it's, it was unique experience and I never experienced. So I click on the link. I went to right. a, like to a room. It's kind of like webinars. There were two ladies and there was a group of people. I mean, I don't know the people. It's, uh, I mean, in, um, who was watching, but they like, Oh, Andre joined the, the video. So yeah, you ask about Velcro. So they just like showing me the thing, how it works, the quality, the pulling, pushing, the like cutting. And I'm like, whoa, so it's... Uh, what it, is it, happening, it, right? Yeah, it, it felt like next, next level. And after that, I'm like, okay, you answer all my questions. So it's nothing left just to pay. So I did like place an order right, right away. That's uh, amazing. So I, I didn't know that you had this experience. And uh, how cool is that, that they were able actually to like answer all of your questions that you might possibly have about the product in like real time. And I mean, we kind of grew up having a similar experience. I don't know about you, Andre, but I remember like watching this uh, like TV advertisements where they were like demonstrating you different like products, different like massage chairs and uh, like certain 
shirt and pots and pans and stuff like that. And I always wanted those because I like seen them on TV. But this one is like completely different because it's interactive and it's in real time, which makes it like, again, brings it to a completely new level. And actually last year, 30% of China e-commerce market was represented through social commerce. So like 30%, it's like, it's a crazy number if you think about it. And which is cool that they actually like connected it all in like one platform. So you don't need to leave the platform to like purchase something. You don't need to leave the platform to sort of like add the credit card or stuff like that. And also like how the process is uh, going basically when you're like going on that like a live stream uh, person was like explaining you all of the perks um, about the products and stuff like that. But also you can sort of like go directly to the product page and it basically like minimizes the video of the influencer talking about the product. So you're like still listening to the audio while shopping for the product. And then when you like bought it, they can like congratulate you on the purchase. So they make all this like experience super, super interactive and it's again it's a real time interaction and it can significantly like enhance your uh, the overall experience it makes it more personal more engaging and what i didn't realize is that like in china or like other countries i guess as well but china is the main one they are not only selling like the velcros or like t-shirts or something they're selling like freaking cars like this can you imagine this is like this is like the huge huge industry this is a huge way of people buying right now and i think it's coming to us i mean we kind of have it so people do have like live streams about the product you know this like influencers they often like doing this um this like video conferences or whatever but it's not the same but i think it's coming so andre how long do you think it's gonna take for us and and canada and europe to catch up with asia i think i i know you have a prediction for 2024 but i think it might take you much much longer why because asia europe mostly on messengers Har hardly people use uh, emails and mm -hmm. all shopping all commerce goes through messengers here right. it's uh i mean in us i don't think people use uh apps uh, like a messenger for shopping or uh, maybe I'm, I'm not aware of not something yet. yeah so same thing was this video stuff like like if i have a store it's like no brainer i'll probably have to the camera uh, like like turn on live stream at 8 a.m and turn it off at 5 p.m listen it's like kind of customers going to your store live and asking you questions so why why don't you do this right now i mean i for me, it's basic. And w what you said about the TV, it's called infomercial here in US. Oh, right, right, right. They selling stuff, but it's so polish this is so mm -hmm. kind of perfect that you can you can sense the kind of uh, professionalism but they're trying to kind of sell 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 here it can be you in your airbnb kitchen theoretically and kind of like hey i'm selling this book this book or like you can start reading the book just you know and people like me like uh lullabies i play sometimes i sing sometimes i play on youtube so people can kind of use your book as a uh, audio for uh, their kids um and i have something else to say uh, and i forgot no i do i do agree with you regarding the infomercials yeah i was looking for that word they do feel very like polished and you know exactly what's gonna happen at the end you know that they are gonna ask you to purchase you know what kind of promotion they're gonna have with us like live uh <laughs> infomercials or whatever it's make it like all more real almost. But I do think that the social commerce is coming to us in 2024, not in the format that that obviously they do it in like Asia and stuff. But I started noticing that more and more brands started like combining their like Shopify's and Instagrams and they are selling products on Instagrams more and more. So you like basically can like purchase through social media, but check out is still like on the Shopify page. You know what I mean? Yeah. And one more thing uh, that to add to a uh, shout out to one of our partner called Video Vice, Vice as W I S E. So first of all, we do have a ebook collaboration recently. So if you go to florium.com slash 100100M, you can download this book. I believe 53 different companies partner up to share 
what worked for them to bring their stores to 100 million in revenue or more. But anyway, their tool, what, what it does is basically adds, um, you can uh, have video on your store. It's not news to us. You can embed video from YouTube or some other software, so it's not new. However, with their tool, when you play the video on your website, it opened the cart with those products that are in the video. So for example, if I'm like wearing this green t-shirts, so it will not show me th like, it will show you the specific green shirt in different size. So you can buy right, right from that video app, which very cool and brands like True Classic use it. So if you want, you can go just to True Classics tees and check how it works. I mean, it, it was impressive and it does not slow down the website. Hmm, interesting. I wonder if, if I I saw it. Um, one of our guests from the CBD industry, I think they had something similar on their Do you website. Know their website. I don't remember. <laughs> But I can I can look after the after the podcast. That's very interesting, honestly. And yeah, and in that way, I guess you can also kind of give almost like a product demo to your customers before they purchase the product. That is definitely the aspect that I'm missing when I'm buying things online. Yeah, that's that's super cool. Cool, uh, Andre. Is it the hello? Is it the hello? A hello badge, hello badge something? yes yes i think hello badge they did have something on their website like at the corner of the like the bottom yes, yes. corner they had this like video but basically they set it up as an faq section so it would yeah, answer I mean, this is like, this is perfect oh and i forgot to mention like if you want to sign up for video wise to try it out like contact us because we can give you a good deal uh, through our partnership with them so if you go directly with them there would be no discount but if you go direct uh, through us there will be either 10 15 20 percent off Amazing, Andre. <laughs> do, you, you... do you see how I, do I see how I sell like ten, fifteen, or twenty? <laughs> it depends how I feel that day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's why you uh, you're not in app sales, right? <laughs> yeah. Cool, Andre. You are kind of an expert in the next one, or at least you have big interest in the next area that we will be discussing. So your trend prediction for 2024. Or at least people think I am. Uh, yeah, so uh, artificial intelligence is here. It's not news. It's been no way. a year. What is AI? <laughs> it's been the entire year, like whole year with the chat GPT. Now, now uh, it's chat GPT4 with uh, some, I mean, the new tools with AI coming up every, every day few years ago we were like stressing on like personalization oh we need to personalize we need to personalize we need to personalize so personalization right now is not something new it's a right it's a minimum requirement like you must personalize it's like if you're not personal personalizing you're already a few years behind so this is kind of bare minimum but there's a next step and this is where ai plays major role that first of all it will help your brand uh, either to personalize your website for customer experience to personalize their cart or uh, categories or using like where we specialize email marketing uh, so personalize the messaging the follow-up emails based on uh, some inputs or some behavior and ai will enhance like help help to to do that kind of personalization that's cool yeah i mean i'm um, i'm using obviously it every day but just like the bare minimum of it and and i know we have like a lot of app partners uh, who are utilizing ai for personalization and um and stuff like that and here's actually the fun stat regarding the personalization that according to the Salesforce, their recent report, 65% uh, of customers, they now expect customers or expect companies and brands to adapt to their changing needs and preferences. So more than half of customers, they kind of they expect it from you. So not doing it would be so 2000s, you guys. Yeah, but in addition to customer experience, I think the uh, analytics will be also on the next mm -hmm. level, meaning for, uh, for as you as a business owner, or if you work in at e-commerce brand, AI will help you to spot positive, negative trends, some gaps, things that 
show you kind of already red flags so you can let's say let's stop spending money on this ads or let's right. stop sending email to that segment also i want to read the question from our uh, whatsapp chat uh, by the way if you are not there go to flowing.com slash whatsapp and join the chat where you are able to ask questions and we might select them and feature them on the podcast so anas asking do brands hire email agency freelancer freelance in the future as ai is covering up all the things so maybe near future the software will come who send campaigns automation segmentation by one click to paraphrase what what i understood it's vera do you believe ai will replace us well yeah we kind of talked about it i don't think that ai will be replacing some professionals i think ai will be replacing professionals who are not using ai because like up until this point brands used ai mostly for like helping with some tasks like creating copy or designs or stuff like that but like moving forward ai will be here to help us analyze the big data, help us to strategize, and basically it will help us to create more tailored experiences. But the final decision is still like up to you as a person, as a lead on that project. That's how, that's how I see it anyways. What do you think, Andre? I always have uh, <laughs> debates with people who say like, oh, just use AI, just use AI, just use AI. And I'm like trying to use AI and it does help me, does help me with a lot of things, especially with my proof, like proofreading was English because mm. I mean, I write very fast. I do a lot of mistakes and I just throw all my copy to, to chat GPT and say like proofread it. However, when I said improve it or like make it more blah, 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 it always spit out something that I hate. It's like, it doesn't yeah. sound like me. Uh, so I, I always ask, like, do not change the tone, just proofread and make it grammatically correct. That's it. So in my opinion, it will not improve. Uh, sorry, it will not replace us because there's a lot of variables. If it's so simple in terms of, let's talk about email marketing only. It's so simple. If it's like straightforward action, that you need to do, let's say, pick something and put something. Yes, that's stuff 100%. Mm-hmm. But if you have many variables, many things, and especially when you have a client who doesn't know what they want, it's like how AI knows what, like if we right. human beings sometimes cannot figure out what they want. Right. Yeah, I agree. I do. I do use AI, obviously, for all of my writing needs. <laughs> but uh, I, I've just noticed that you like emailed to my like landlord or whatever they were doing the checks for my employment and you were like if you have any question qu- questions you're like <laughs> misspelled <laughs> like questions CEO of Floium email marketing agency that was cute I don't it's obviously not a big deal no so I just use like, AI I use AI and train to misspell some words you know like I'm just like to feel more personal right yes yes I have a funny story so I was on a consulting I'm consulting some Ukrainian business kind of to help you a Ukrainian economy <laughs> and they were telling me a story that they were on a sales page and the guy was selling to them <laughs> they say like we didn't know was it real person or AI because we were asking the guy <laughs> a questions he <laughs> he stopped for a little never respond and continue with his script <laughs> <laughs> maybe he was just like a car salesman that's how they do things you know <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. Or maybe he, his headphones didn't work. Oh, that's hilarious. Because, <laughs> like, I, I, I know how it can be unusual for, like, a person from Europe. Because, like, in Europe, not just in Ukraine, but, like, everywhere, I've started noticing it with, like, British people or, like, German or something. They're more, like, to the point. You, like, ask the question, they answer the question. It's, like, almost, like, more efficient, the conversation. But in America, sometimes we are guilty of not answering the questions. <laughs> That's true. You're a British now, so you cannot say anymore. Gosh, we... I, I, I hope I'm going to pick up some of the Britishness over the next uh, British week and a half. <laughs> yeah, I'm like still working on my American slash Canadian accent, and now I need to learn British. <laughs> my uh, younger daughter, uh, she's like right now all in for Papa Pig. And oh. in Papa Pig, hold on, but it's not British. I think they it are Australian. No, Isn't it's like it? as British Australian? as they as they make them. Yeah. 
Okay, so I am like always like oh, it's like so. F- I mean, so f- cool to listen. Oh, no, it's, I'm, I, my, I love my, my bad. I'm thinking about also she likes um, Bluey and Bluey is Australian. Okay, maybe because British like uh, Peppa Pig. I think it's like the she's like quintessentially British. This is like the word <laughs> I learned <laughs> recently. Yeah, I, I love Peppa Pig. I'm like guilty of watching it. Cool. Vera, okay, next reveal one. number three. Number three, omni-channel experience marketing. Um, do come you guys on, know? It's such a come on, such a generic word. What do you mean? What I mean? Uh, okay, so do you know the biggest difference between like the omni-channel and like multiple multiple channel marketing? Because multi-channel marketing, because that's where I got confused. Like back in the day when I first like started um, discovering these two topics, there is like a big big difference between the two. Can you explain it, Andre? Do you know what is sure, like so... the biggest thing? Yeah. I mean, like multi-channel is when each channel is lives independently and they do not communicate to each other versus omni-channel where they sync and they have the messages based on client's experience and not what they want to do. Because right. recently was a big, big company, Trough. By the way, Kardashian just made the offer and they're buying this brand, Trough. It's a hot sauces. And I was, for for Black Friday, Saturday, Monday, I bought a bought pack of those hot sauces. It's truffle infused. I, I do love hot sauces. I and love they, truffles. as an upsell, they sold me the two mayonnaise, mayonnaise mayo. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, like hot sauce and like was one hot and another also truffle infused. And then... I receive email saying and text message saying, Hey, we're excited. So you become a customer by mayo. And I'm like, what do you mean? I just paid for it. Just, so yeah. this is uh, show you an example of not omni-channel approach. Right. Yeah. It's probably, it was the multi-channel marketing where they had separate conversation with you, with the same customer through like different channels. And this is like the biggest difference, right? The omni-channel marketing is shared across multiple channels, but it like still you have like one consistent conversation. And in that other one, it's like separate conversation with the same customer. Omni-channel marketing, even though it's such a buzzword, everyone heard about it. Everyone is like thinking they are doing the omni-channel marketing. They're actually not. There's like not a lot of brands who are doing it right, honestly, I think still, because it does require like a good customer data platform. It does require some like app integrations. It requires like even like integrations between like different teams on your team. And yeah, I mean, it's it, it can be a bit challenging, but once you set it up properly, this is huge. And this is kind of what people expect nowadays. They do want you to have have this like smooth, seamless, omni-channel experience, customer journey. Vera, I have a, a relevant question from our chat where it's like, what's the scope of Clavio now as a Sandlane and many other ESP are getting bigger now? So I don't want to talk specifically about ESPs, but many tools right now, like Shopify uh, came up with their email marketing platform. Right. Post Attentive beca- uh, came up with email marketing platform. Yadpo came up with a review. Oh, sorry. They were a review. They have review loyalty now they have email they has sms and why 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 is happening i mean first of all they want to take more market share Mm -hmm. like right now the the leader on the market one of the uh, the clavio but first of all they want to take market share but the most important thing what they are selling to you they are selling you omni-channel approach if you Mm -hmm. are in our yatpo ecosystem if you are in our clavio ecosystem if you are in our sandlane ecosystem you can communicate omni-channel because if right. you have attentive for SMS, Clavier for email, or Kendo for review, yes, you can integrate, but you need somebody internally or you need to work with agency to see all those channels and nicely organize them. So it's you're not over double communicating with your client or trip. Right. Yeah. It's just like takes more, more efforts. Right. And I mean, Clavio 
kind of present themselves as CDP platform now, don't they? I mean, or they do have like the elements of uh, customer data platform. I think this is, they going that way. And mm -hmm. something similar as with SMS, this is my prediction about Clavio. Again, I don't have any insights. So this is just my hypothesis. They were, uh, one of the release SMS back in the days, it was kind of poor version of uh, SMS platform, but right now it's mm -hmm. very robust and powerful and compatible. Right to other platforms same thing with reviews it, it's good but it's not close to like okando or reviews.io right. but i think they will improve same thing cdp it's a poor version right now and i hope they're not listening to me because they will hate <laughs> me but <laughs> moving forward they will be developing totally totally and i mean they just like launched the reviews when like two months ago or something so i'm sure it's gonna summer i think in summer or like summer maybe yeah I mean, wasn't summer like two months ago? In my head, it was. Well, anyway. Listen, it's, HubSpot is a great example. If you start using HubSpot for, for example, for CRM, it doesn't make, does not make any sense to go to some other platform to, right. to have a chat feature or a DocuSign feature. You want to stay in HubSpot ecosystem because mm -hmm. like all pieces talk to each other and the tool designed to talk to each other. So it's omni-channel approach to sales or to market. Right. And I love when brands are doing the omni-channel, not just with the, within their like online ecosystem, but also with their physical stores. They have a little story time and I have a show, show and tell, you know, like they do in kindergartens. I talked about this brand, but I think they are rock stars, to be honest. Uh, it's a Vancouver brand. They sell glasses. So I needed a glasses, a pair of glasses. So I went like literally online and just like started looking for some glasses. I have uh, heard from my friends about this brand called Kits. Uh, so I went to their website. I found the glasses that I liked. They had this really cool tools where you can like try them on virtually, but I left their website. I didn't even put the glasses in my cart or whatever. I just left their website. Then I started seeing like obviously the ads with the glasses that I liked. So I went to their website. I placed my glasses in my cart. I received an email with a discount code, of course, of course, and I got my glasses. After I got my first pair of glasses, just like... <sighs> This is embarrassing how much money I spend on things that I don't need. <laughs> after I got my uh, first glasses, after that, I received um, this basically physical mail. Like after I received my physical package, like a week later, I received this physical mail um, that was telling me that, hey, you have three free drinks in our store because this is like the craziest concept ever, but they do have like online store, but they also have physical location. It's in Vancouver. It's by the beach where they sell coffee and glasses. Why not? Oh, cool wow. idea. I'm like, wow. I'm going to be in the city. Well, no, I, I didn't plan to go to the city. So I drove 40 minutes <laughs> to get my <laughs> free matcha um, or whatever. And I just like get my coffee. It's a beautiful day. And uh, they were like, do you want to check out our glasses? And I was like, yes, I want to check out your glasses because now I'm a writer and I need cool writer glasses. So I got myself like cool writer glasses. Oh, See? wow. Like, I'm, oh, wow. like in the video, I'm like showing my glasses. Yeah, I needed them for work with computer. Anyways. So I got there because they got me to the store with their like a physical mail, right? Then a few days later or a week later, they were like, thank you for buying these glasses. Do you want to get the same pair for yourself with like X dollars off? And also if you spend certain amount of money, you can get um, like additional pair for free. What I did, I made my husband <laughs> got the same glasses. So we drove to <laughs> kids again. He got the same identical glasses and I got my pair of fourth glasses just for free. You see how cool are they? So that's oh, basically wow. a story about, and I didn't even need a freaking first pair of glasses. And now I have four, <laughs> <laughs> and now I have four <laughs> pairs of glasses because of their amazing omni-channel marketing experience. And it wasn't the multi-channel. Yes, they were talking to me through different channels, but they knew exactly what I bought, when I bought, they knew exactly what to send me at what point. They built this amazing, powerful omni-channel ecosystem. And I got a victim. I became a victim of their amazing marketing. So kudos to you, kids glasses. And they have this amazing promo that first pair is for free right now. So guys, if you're listening to me, if you're in Vancouver, wink, wink, you can get your first pair for free. No, I'm not an affiliate. Yeah. And some this matcha. is my story. <laughs> yes. And some matcha. <laughs> so it's, it's actually, it's actually powerful.
Right. So this was my story about amazing omnichannel experience. And this is like what you kind of can expect in the year that is coming. Want to discover how much money your email marketing can actually bring you? If that's the case, let our team of email marketing experts show you how. With our free email marketing audit, we'll conduct a comprehensive analysis of your email marketing efforts, provide you with an action plan, and show you how to effectively segment and convert your audience. Simply go to flowium.com slash audit and book your audit today. Andri, what do you think about the upcoming trends, like other trends? Do you have anything sure. in mind? So the final one, number four, we, we believe or I believe is um, the brands will have a little bit harder time to sell this year than previous year because due to kind of inflation and they need to come up with a more creative ways to sell it. So it's not your typical 10% off, get it right now. Next time you come to the store, it's another 10% off, which is kind of typical stuff. Like uh, brands will work harder. They either have to lower, I mean, either lower their price, uh, increase their discounts or come up with some other creative ways to to sell. As we here at Flowing always recommend, I mean, don't be lazy, don't do just 10% off, come up with something, either, I don't know, like uh, cheat sheets, something that um, like improve the, um, how you call it, uh, experience, what Vera just mm -hmm. showed, explained, like free much, how much does it cost to, like, yes, you have to have a physical store, but uh, this is like prototype. Listen, opt in to get the free much in our store while you checking the glasses. Stuff like right. that, it's unique, it stands out. Listen, you already heard about this, it's, um, it's a free, free, free marketing. Like, uh, there's tap season, uh, tap season oils, the brand where my wife buys oils uh, for, like, for cooking. The olive mm -hmm. oils, balsamic vinegar, it's like they have amazing oil, like amazing oil. And I'm the guy who, like, don't care what, what I eat, <laughs> but that, that kind of, oil, uh, that, oil so good that even I do care now which oil I take. But they send me also like free gifts. They send us free gifts. They offer us discount. They have a loyalty program. They have a referral program. So they covering kind of omni-channel approach, but from, mm -hmm. uh, from discounting. So they sometimes build the perceived value. They give you a small version of their product. So we want to consume, buy more of their product. They, instead of the, giving us discount, they giving us like points. So mm -hmm. uh, I know we probably spoke about something similar on the previous episode, and you probably heard right. about this on other podcasts, but this is would be the new norm. Yeah, and I mean, I kind of expect the brands to have some sort of like loyalty program built into their ecosystem now. I kind of do expect a good quality, like high quality customer service. It also can be like a value and maybe some like very convenient return procedures or like return policies can also have that like extra value. So yes, this year it's going to be a bit more challenging. Sorry for wrapping up the podcast on such a low note. On the other hand, I don't know if it's more positive note or not, but brands will reduce their acquisition budgets and invest more in customer retention so i think it's like at the end of the day it's it's like a positive trend the brand will have to think of how to not just acquire that customer but how to retain them and uh yeah it's you probably have more data about this right yeah sorry go ahead it's a supply and demand thing if uh, more brands if our predictions are correct if mm -hmm. more <laughs> brands invest less in the acquisition that there would be less competition in advertising space building I mean, we're not saying it they they will drop it, but like less, uh, right. they will invest less. So the price of the bits will be lower. So brands, the price to acquire a customer would be also lower. So right. uh, yeah, I mean, the cool stat that I heard, I never heard, honestly, I never heard somebody put it this way, but I went to Grand Canaria to agency workshop and there was gorgeous and loyalty line and they had this, the same stats in their presentation so that mm -hmm. back into 2019 brands in general were losing nine dollars 
to acquire customers. So basically, after all they spend, all profit, it's basically like nine dollars. Now mm -hmm. in 2023, that number is twenty nine dollars. So That's it's insane. almost what three times, yeah, a little bit more, more than three times more. That's insane. Yeah, and I mean, and if you if you think about the conversion rate to. Um, that like only 3% on average of all of the new traffic you acquire or like potential customers that you acquire on average convert. This all like adds up, right? That's why all of this loyalty programs, all of this creative ways of adding value to your customer's life, that's why they're more important than ever. So yeah, invest more in customer retention and uh, and you'll be, your customers will be happier and so will you. So here you have it, four and a half, I guess, four and a half <laughs> trends that we predict this year to happen. Yeah. Yeah. So wish you happy holidays. Wish you happy new years. Thank you very much to everybody for listening to us, to for tuning in. We have uh, exciting new plans for 2024. We're excited to come up with a new episodes. Also, if you want to be part of our journey, jo join the chat on the WhatsApp. Go to flowing.com slash WhatsApp. Collaborate with us, ask questions, propose your episodes. We're here to serve you. We want you to, to be a resource for you and share what you care about. Thank you so much for being with us through this year. We appreciate you guys. Definitely join our channel. It's going to be it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. We're happy to have you there. And I guess we'll see you in the year 2024. See you. Thank you. Bye. Hey, if you're watching this and you like what you see, please hit subscribe and hit the bell because it helps us grow our channel.